During the 1920s, America's love affair with the wonder of flight reached full blossom with Charles Lindbergh's historic solo air journey to Paris. And many new model airplane clubs were established throughout the country. The sport and hobby of model flying grew by leaps and bounds, a phenomenon that has continued to the present day. This rapid growth necessitated organization, and in 1936, the Academy of Model Aeronautics was formed. Located in Washington, D.C., it became the governing body for model aviation in America. The AMA membership reached 35,000 in 1970 and had doubled back by 1980. It continues to grow with new members joining daily, for this is a sport that draws people from all walks of life. Housewives, surgeons, professional athletes, students, astronauts, and taxi drivers. Perhaps no sport has a more universal appeal. Fathers, sons, wives, and daughters, model aviation is an activity for all. Okay, now straighten it out. A little left, a little left. All right, keep it there. Okay, I got the box now, all right? Give it to Donnie Jr., and then we'll take it from there. All right, Don, you ready? Yeah. To the right a little bit. Right, right, right. You're going left. Right. right. That's a boy. Put a little up in it. Pair of up. All right, I got it. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Relax. Easy, huh? Great. Yeah. All right, now how about if I land it? You're almost out of fuel. Okay. Now, cut throttle. Follow me through. Just like you're flying it on the box. Nice, smooth landing. Look at that. Nice. Okay. The reason for model aviation's popularity are numerous. It is a relatively inexpensive hobby that suits either individual participation or family togetherness. Model aviation is also a hobby that inspires learning, for at one time or another, the modeler gathers or shares knowledge in the fields of mathematics, engineering, chemistry, meteorology, physics, and others. At the same time, he develops experience in perseverance, patience, and pleasure. Model aviation has also played a role in man's conquest of outer space. One of NASA's most intricate projects is the Space Shuttle, a project to which modelers have made invaluable contributions. In the early days of space shuttle testing, there were problems that were difficult to pinpoint. Some of the engineers involved were modelers who built miniature versions of the space shuttle and the 747 that carried it. By studying the performance of the miniatures, the scientists were able to get the bugs out, and the space shuttle program went on to chalk up some remarkable successes. While successes in space are laudable, model aviation contributes even more right here on Earth. For those who are involved, it can be a passion, a pastime, a plaything, or an outlet for the competitive urge. For within the sport of model aeronautics, there are many varieties of competition from which to choose. Some may revel in the drama of control line flying in a national contest. Others may get their thrills by recreating the duels of the Red Baron in competition combat flying at a local field. The possibilities are myriad, from free flight soaring to radio control aerobatics, from local meets to international championship gatherings. The challenge, the comradeship, and the pure joy of the sport are all there for the asking. It takes very little to become involved in the sport of model aviation. 
But there are two basic requirements. The modeler needs a plane to fly and a place to fly it. The first requirement is easy to fulfill because the hobbyist can either build or buy his wings to the sky. The second requirement is not as easy to satisfy for suitable flying sites are in short supply. Housing projects and other real estate developments have gobbled up many of the previously available open spaces like this, which are used for model flying. The basic facility requirements vary with the different types of model flying. For example, control line models fly around the pilot, so paved or grass circles are needed, approximately 180 feet in diameter for each. Several circles at any one location are desirable. Alongside the circles, a controlled access pit area is also needed to service the models, lay out control wires, and perform general preparation and maintenance. Also desirable are areas for parking and safe spectator vantage points. In general, a few acres will suffice for control line activity. The only basic facility requirement for free flight aircraft is a 600 acre or more field without trees, boulders, fences or steep ravines. Parking for participants need not be paved. For radio controlled aircraft, the basic needs are wind oriented paved or smooth grass runways for takeoff and landing an unobstructed 1,000-foot field length with runways one-third the long dimension is adequate. Also desirable is a paved pit area with interconnecting taxiways to the main runway, as well as a parking area. If the latter is close, it can also be the spectator viewing area. Naturally, the requirements we have just seen are general and idealized. Many flying clubs settle for far less and few clubs have been lucky enough to obtain a facility that didn't need plenty of work. However, as a group, modelers are typically not afraid of hard work, and they expect to help improve their airfields. It's part of the fun and discipline of the hobby. In many areas of the country, modelers have turned abandoned fields, mountainsides, decaying airports, and barren land into beautifully manicured and fastidiously maintained flying parks. And by using mufflers, they show their intent to be good neighbors, for noise reduction is a primary requirement of most clubs. In many instances, local or federal government agencies have helped make flying sites available to model aviation clubs. One such instance came in a landmark agreement between the Radio Control Association of Greater New York and the United States Department of the Interior. This agreement established conditions for radio control flying at Brooklyn's Floyd Bennett Field, a former naval air station. This field, which is now part of the United States Gateway National Recreation Area, had in past years fallen into disuse. Today, however, qualified pilots and interested spectators journey here from all over metropolitan New York City on vibrant days to soak up a little fun in the sun while exquisite models fill the robin's egg sky. the large and ideally constructed flying sites in America today. Sites where major competitions can be held, where spectators can watch in safety and comfort, and where modelers can fly their aircraft to their heart's content.
But just as important as the showcase locations are the many more smaller flying fields dotted around the country where friends and family can gather to swap stories, parts, and information on a carefree Sunday afternoon. Because there are so many more flying clubs today than existed 10 years ago, there is now a greater need for flying sites than ever before. Sites that would operate under the parameters and guidance offered by the Academy of Model Aeronautics. The AMA advocates a system in which safety regulations are stringent and adhered to strictly, with insurance coverage automatically provided to all AMA members and flying site property owners. However, the paramount concern is safety, so field managers, marshals, and safety officers, if necessary, are often voluntarily appointed to see that the rights of property and privacy are protected. These are but some of the factors of flying site operation which have evolved over the years in conjunction with the philosophy of model aeronautics, which is simply that all are welcome to join the fun. Perhaps ex-astronaut Frank Borman stated it best when he wrote, Model aviation instills patience, skill, creativity, and most importantly, the satisfaction of a job well done. I urge the community governments, and particularly the park departments, to preserve and develop recreational sites and land areas suitable for model aircraft activity. This is certainly one of the finest commitments we can make toward instilling the challenges of youth and ensuring the leisure enjoyment of many old timers like myself. Frank Borman's statements certainly ring true, for the sky above belongs to everyone. Through model aviation, anybody can fly with safety and enjoyment at a minimum expense and with minimum impact on the environment. By adding the sky above, to the land below, another dimension is provided for recreation. The land becomes more valuable and serves more people. And what could be more wholesome for any community than people spending time together with the joy of a plane, a place, a perfect day?